Hello, welcome back. If you're new, welcome for the first time. Today's video is going to be the part two, the grand reveal of my small pantry makeover. So just to give you a quick recap, I decided for 2022 that I was gonna do a bunch of projects to get my life together for a lack of better terminology. And so I am doing a whole bunch of decluttering projects, organizing um, home projects, including like DIYs, renovation. I use that term a little bit loosely, but you know what I mean. I'm just tackling all kinds of things to help uh, my home function better. That's at the end of the day, the key to all of this is functionality for my family and functionality for your family and what works for me and what works for you. So we're a couple projects in at this point and I did a part one of this pantry makeover and I will link that down below if you'd like to check that out. You can see where we started really. We started with a really basic smallish pantry and decided to remove the bifold doors, put French doors on. We took out the like metal shelving units and some of the like closet made type stuff that was in there and painted, replaced it all with some wood shelving from Home Depot and these really cool looking um, steel brackets from Home Depot as well. In hindsight, I think it would have made more sense to just have custom shelves cut from wood at Home Depot and stain them myself. I don't know financially like what that would have done to the budget, but I do think overall I would have been able to maximize the space had I done that instead of using the pre-cut shelves. So, that is neither here nor there because is it is done. It is it is finished. You live and you learn and it's not uh, something that I feel is a decision that I need to go back and like try to remedy by any means. I really like how it turned out. So in this video, we are going to be organizing. This is like the fun part for a lot of you. It's both, it's all the fun part to me. I love projects like this, but I, I do, I do really enjoy the organization. I shared a haul with you guys of a bunch of the affordable organization products that I picked up from Walmart. I also ended up picking up a couple things from Target and some things from Amazon. So I will link everything down below for you in the description box if you are in need of any of these types of items for organizing. And honestly, they can be used in a lot of different spaces. You're gonna see in upcoming videos where I am using these in the kitchen, in the laundry room, in bathrooms in all kinds of places for organization. So they're very practical um, and affordable in terms of, you know, the cost of organization items. It can really, I mean, it's, it's expensive to have something to put your crap in. It, that's very weird. It's like, it's not even the thing. It's a thing to hold the things and it's expensive. So anyways, I digress. Now begins phase two. Got to paint the doors still and the door frame. And then I think I'm ready to start organizing things and taking all of these bins and baskets and all of that and start finally organizing things and getting it put back. That's what's next, which means I gotta go change my clothes into my, well, I may work on the organization and the painting later tonight so the paint can dry when there's not kids that will touch it. If I paint right now, kids will touch those doors. So maybe I'll work on organization and paint later. For the road all my life Thirsty for adventure all my youth Chasing all my freedoms down Liberty Avenue And every time I hear a Now I did see a comment, I think I saw it more than once, which is why it stuck out in my mind but a lot, a couple people, I don't say a lot of people, but a couple people asking, and I just wanted to address it. Why do people insist on buying containers to move their food out of the container it came in into this container? It just seems like a waste, and is it just for the aesthetics of it? And I will admit that I was in that camp for a long time of like, this is just to make your pantry look pretty. There's no practical purpose. And then I had eight children along the way and realized that for example, when my kids open a bag of cereal, to go and roll back down the little interior plastic bag, make sure it's nice and, and tight, and then close the lid, it just doesn't happen. And maybe that's a parenting fail on my part in not um, teaching my kids to diligently close packages airtight, but it's a regular problem. Now, for us, we do have a lot of people and we go through food and stuff pretty quickly, so things don't go bad all, like constantly, but enough that 
um, especially there's certain foods that are very, very finicky, and if you give them too much air, and all of a sudden they just taste terrible, they're stale. That's the reason that we have chosen, you can kind of tell too with like what we've chosen to put in those containers. It's the kids' snacks and their cereal because this is the thing that my kids are independently going in and getting, pouring themselves some of, and this is easy, even for my little kids, to put the lids back on, snap it down, and put it away. So it makes it a lot easier for us to keep our food um, fresh, if you will, as fresh as processed pretzel -y food can be. You know what I mean. You understand what I'm saying, okay? You get it, I know you do. Anyway, so that is my soapbox. So once I kind of figured out where I wanted everything to go in the pantry, then it was time to actually tackle the task of making the labels for everything. So I decided to use my Cricut machine for this. Um, I initially thought I would use my little Cricut Joy right here, but I ended up just using my um, Explore because I already had it out, set up, connected to my computer, and I used my bigger mat so I could just print a bunch at the same time. So that worked out well for me. Um, but I am still really hoping that I will get some good use out of this Joy machine for s maybe smaller projects, maybe if I don't have as many labels to print. I just used my handy dandy telephone and uh, pulled up a blank notes um, in the notes app and wrote down what I wanted all the labels to say. Joy. But the now, first thing I'm going to do is find the font that I want. Um, Cricut already has a bunch of fonts preloaded in the design center, the Cricut Design Center. So I'm going to look and see what they have. If they don't have a font that I like, I will look at some of the free font websites or then eventually the paid font websites, but let's hope we don't get that far. But I'm also going to be on the baskets that can't just like adhere the, the vinyl to. I got these at Target and they are just these little uh, labels and they basically just slide on. But I don't want everything else is going to be labeled with white. And I don't really want silver, white, and black, so I also have some black matte cardstock. So I think what I'm going to do is just replace the white label in here with the black cardstock so I can still have the white writing. You know what? <gasps> I just got such a good idea. I don't love the silver either. I have black in there already, and y'all know how I feel about black and copper, and I have some copper spray paint. Would that make this too extra? Is there such a thing? Well, for sure there is, but is this it? I don't know. Am I at the line? Who knows? Mm, I think I might do that. Let's pull these out and spray paint this part copper and then do the matte black with white writing in it. Maybe we shall do that. That will mean that I will not get this video done today as I had hoped. Is it worth it? Maybe, maybe not. It's worth it to me in the long run. Sophie's choice, you know? I'm gonna give this a whirl with this first one and see how it goes. I'm just kind of testing right now because I 
I want to make sure that they print the right size and everything. I've been taking morning slowly Waking up with the sweet sound of the birds Reading books and sipping coffee I forgot how much I love getting lost in words Well it took us a while to get here Took the world falling apart But maybe we needed to take a step back To remember how lucky we are It's like time was falling asleep In the afternoon Sunlight is keeping us warm in and of itself y'all is a it, it this is a moving it's alive if you will this is a moving project this is not a uh one and done aha it's completely finished and it's glorious and it will always look like this and it will never change these flies though i really it's like if it gets over 55 degrees the flies are like we're alive it drives me insane 
So the pantry is a continually evolving project. So I do have a few more labels I want to make. I, I am not 100% sold on the way that I have organized everything. So I'm thinking I might, you know, rejig things, move things around a bit. Overall, I like how it turned out. We ended up deciding on the left-hand French door not to put anything there. Um, I did buy these spice racks and I will link them because I really, really like them and I'm hoping I'll be able to use them in a different spot in the kitchen. But we ultimately didn't really want to drill into the actual door. That's why I like the can organizer that I found on Amazon because it does not require you to drill into the door. You hang it over the top and then it's got little stickies on the back as you move down the door to kind of help hold it so that when you open and close the door, it doesn't like slam into it. I did also think of utilizing the wall space inside of the pantry to the sides there for the spice racks. I may do that. Um, on the right hand side where the dog food container is, my initial plan there, like a broom holder and you, you know, mount it to the wall and then brooms snap into it because I really wanted to free up some of the stuff in our laundry room. Our laundry room is also the downstairs bathroom, the guest bathroom. We've got it's just, it was once a, like a full bath that they turned into, the people before us turned into a um, like half bath and laundry room. So they like tiled in the tub and put the washer and dryer on top of the tub. It's a whole thing. It's just not very functional and ideally one of the things if we ever can do an addition that we would love to change. It is what it is. And so when you open the door, we've got like our vacuums along the wall because they have to be mounted to the wall where they can charge. And then the brooms on the back door and the mops. And it's like you swing these doors open and things are whacking. And at the end of the day, I didn't really love the idea of having the dirt, dirty brooms in the pantry. Once I like got everything all put together and it was time to mount the thing in there, I was like, mm, I don't know if I want the dirty brooms. Maybe that's weird. I don't know. You can tell me. Maybe that's weird to not want the dirty brooms and mops hanging like next to the food. That just feels weird. We're going to do a redo of the laundry room too coming up. So you'll see what we end up deciding to do there. But that's kind of how, where we're at right now. Like I said, I still want to make some more labels for like the onions and potatoes and some of the baskety things. But overall, we're at like 95% and I feel good about just here we are sharing it with you because I think that last little 5% is going to get hobbled along as we live with it and figure out what we need to change, what we need to move around. And of course, if you're subscribed and you're following along with the future projects, you'll be able to see if I move things in there or make different you know, changes as I am tackling the kitchen coming up. I know that there's certain things in the kitchen that I'll probably end up kind of moving and utilizing some space in the pantry for. So all that will be forthcoming. And also, as I mentioned in part one, this is the last thing I'll say, and then we're going to end this video for real skis this time. As moms, we make organization systems and we set everything up beautifully. And it's like, oh, perfection. And then the rascals that live in our house, the big rascals, the little rascals, the hairy rascals, they come behind us and don't understand our logic and how we've created this system. So instead of fighting constantly with my family to do things the way I want you to do them, do things the way I set them up, to, can't you see that this is what this is for? Instead of getting frustrated with that, those are battles that are not worth it to me. Those are hills I'm not dying on. For me, what I can do is I can say, okay, I'm gonna make this so obvious that you'd have to be a just complete sack of stupid. You just have to be a big old sack of stupid to not be able to understand that the popcorn goes in the clear bin that already has popcorn in it and says popcorn on the outside. Therefore, if someone puts the wrong thing in there, then I know it's probably time to call the doctor and I don't have to get angry. I just go, the doctor, I, this person is clearly lost their mind and we need help. It will help to avoid, if you will, unnecessary battles, arguments about things. That is my goal this time. So two years ago, I did a bunch of decluttering and organizing, and I just focused on getting rid of crap and dealing with crap. This time, I'm both dealing with crap, but also trying to do better about the systems I put in place to ensure that they can be followed by everyone and not just me. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this pantry makeover. I hope you enjoyed the final product. We sure do. 
And if you don't, that's okay because you don't live here. Seriously, that's it. I'm bouncing now. Don't forget, everything will be linked down below in the description box if any of these little items are things that you need to complete any of your organization projects. And then also don't forget to subscribe. Come back. Lots more to come. Lots more projects. We're going to have a lot of fun over the coming months as we get our lives together. These are the days of our lives. Clearly, time for me to go. Bye.